Hello everybody and welcome back to Skip Allen Paints and to my YouTube channel. This is part two of a series of videos about Beyond Painting. Okay, so we, in the last video, we made a copy of the uh, um, canvas layer. We brought it up to uh, the second layer, the copy of the canvas layer, and then we applied a, a ma layer mask and took out some of the stuff that uh, we had added by virtue of the the uh, copy layer. And this is what we've got left. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to go up to File, uh, Iterative Save. And what that's going to do, it's going to take my One Beyond Painting Riff, which was just the single uh, canvas uh, image, and it's going to save it uh, as uh, one beyond painting dot zero zero one, and it will capture now this second layer that we've added. So we're going to do an iterative save. Okay, and you can see that it's an iterative save because of the zero zero one. Now, what I want to do this is a gel layer up here, and I can't really do much with it, and I want to take it and drop it to the canvas. Okay, so now we've changed the canvas layer, and once again, I want to go Control A or Command A. Let's make sure I'm on that thing. Control A or Command A, and do uh, that will create a uh, select all. Again, if you go to your layer adjuster tool, you hold down your Alt key or your Option key for the Mac, click in the center of the image and it duplicates layer one, okay? Now before we made it into gel, we don't wanna make it into gel this time, we've made the duplicate layer because we want to protect the canvas layer. We want to um, make some changes to this layer one, uh, and then if we like it, we can drop it down here and just obliterate this canvas layer in favor of what we've changed. Okay, so what I want to do, well, I want to go to Effects, and I want to go to Tonal Control and Adjust Colors. Now, this particular uh, panel and function is pretty powerful. You can do the same things that you can do here in underpainting, that is, do a hue shift saturation value. Underpainting has some extra things that you can do, like brightness and um, contrast and, uh, you know, some other stuff that makes it desirable in many cases just because it does a lot. But what underpainting doesn't have is the ability to use paper, image luminance, or original luminance. And just real quickly, let's try and see what those are about. If I take my value slider down, then you see, <laughs> whoa, we get this really dark color happening all over. It's because the value uh, was darkened uniformly, uniformly throughout the image. If I do the drop down and click on paper, now it's showing my paper texture. And again, it's by value. It's taking the darker lines and making them darker. The lighter area is a little bit lighter and it's showing the paper texture. And that's not quite as harsh as uniform, but I wouldn't want paper texture all over the image like this. And then we go to image luminance. Now, here we've got something that's a little more interesting because it's not, see if I go back up to uniform color, see it's not based on the uniform color, it's based on the luminance of the image. It's more subtle and it's more natural in the way it looks. Now, we're over the top because I've dropped the value minus 94%. We wouldn't do that in real life, but it goes to show you what's, what it's about. Now, if I come down to the last one, which is original luminance, if I were working, still working with the clone image, which I'm not, uh, because, you know, I changed it to a, I saved it as a JPEG and that broke the link to the clone to Melissa's beautiful photograph. Um, so I'm not working with, um, 
a clone. And so what Painter does when it doesn't have a real source image or a clone, it goes to the currently selected pattern, which would be these, in my case, these floral patterns were the last thing, things that I had selected. So if I say original luminance and say, okay, well, it's weird. It's not showing. I thought it would show All right, let's see. Got over it. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, it's just I needed to go ahead and say original luminance. And as you drop the value down, you can see how the value is changing based on the pattern here. Now, again, if I were working with the clone, Melissa's uh, photograph, or the, the source, Melissa's photograph, it would make these changes based on the luminance of the original image. Okay, so let's reset all of this. And let's go to image luminance and let's see what we might want to do. Well, I know that I want to go with a hue shift, okay? I want to take this red to a little bit oranger color. And in order to take that red to an oranger color, um, I would have to increase the hue shift above zero. If you increase the hue shift, your the shift is going to go clockwise. So if I'm right here and it goes clockwise, it's going to take me into the oranger range, which is what I would like to do. It's also going to take my green down into the bluer green range, which would be fine. That doesn't matter at all. Now, if I go to the negative side, it, the shift is going to be counterclockwise. So this would go a bit bluer and this would go a bit yellower. So let, let's just test that out. Let's drop this down about 11%. Well, you can see that that definitely went down toward this pinky color, this blue pink fuchsia. I don't know what color that is, but anyway, that, that particular color and the green, which was here moved in that direction. So see, we're going counterclockwise and we're getting a yellower, uh, uh, green. Now, if we go the opposite direction, about 14%, the other way, let's go to about 12%. Then now we've moved clockwise and this has gone into the orange area and this has gone into the blue green area and that's kind of the direction I want to go but I don't want to go that much I want to go about maybe five percent yeah about like that okay now I would like to increase the saturation a bit as well so if I increase the saturation, not that much, about 25%, it's going to look kind of like that. And then I want to drop the value, not 18, but about 5%, about like that. And I'm going to say, okay. Now I've taken that same image that I had before and I've altered it utilizing uh, adjusted image. I'm sorry, adjusted color. And that's pretty cool because I've done it according to the um, image luminance of this particular image. Now again, we're, we when we made that new layer, our icons are gone. So I'm gonna come down here to canvas and back up to layer one, and I've got my icon availability again. Now I'm going to click on a layer mask. I've got my channel painter. I'm going to go not all the way up to gray this time. I'm going to come down about there. And what I'm going to do when I go in with the channel painter, I'm going to bring pink back into here, not the orange, but a pinker kind of color. Now I'm not taking a lot, 
because I'm in the I'm in a gray and black conceals white reveals so this gray uh, is going to conceal some but not as much as you would expect and I'm just trying to bring some pink back in to the orange not a lot just a little bit and that's probably all I want to do and I think I want to make this a little greener again so if I come down here and take this out then what's going to happen here is that's going to go to that lighter color and pop it up a little bit more. Now I'm going to go down to black and pop my ac accents back up. Just about like that. And there you go. I think we've gotten a different one now. So if we turn this off, see the difference? We've got that brighter color and we've gone a little oranger than we had before. And I'm beginning to like it a little better. Okay, so the next step we want to do is we're going to have to apply this so we can do some other stuff to it. Uh, that we might think is better. So I'm going to go ahead and go apply layer mask. Okay, now at this point, let's turn that back on. At this point, I'm going to do another iterative save, which will save it with this new layer one. So we go up to file, iterative save, and we're at beyond painting point two. Okay, and we'll come back in a minute for video three. Bye-bye.